welcome to the Fiber Tales podcast. My name is Lærke and this is a podcast all about knitting, about knitwear design and about anything else I feel like sharing from my life. I am coming to you from a small island in the southern part of Denmark called Fyn. I live in the neck of the woods with my partner and two children in a small old house. And um, yeah, if you're new to the channel, welcome. And if you have been following for a while, welcome back. I know it's been a little while since I podcast podcasted last time. It was actually when the apple trees were in bloom. So that must have been in the spring. And yeah, it's so many things are happening. Fall is really here. And actually I thought instead of talking about how, how it looks like outside, I want to bring you along and show you. Okay, now I think it's good. I was, uh, I just had to set it up <laughs> for a moment, so I had to cut there. But yeah, it's just uh, really lovely outside. There's still some apples on the trees and the weather is really pretty. It goes, changes between rain and sunshine and I just really enjoy the fall this year. Um, and I also, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about what's been going on this summer and where I've been and I haven't posted much on Instagram and I haven't posted much on here. Sorry, I got distracted by the chickens, they're running around over here. But that is because it's just been, I just, in the summer I tend to kind of unplug a little bit and spend as much time as I can outside enjoying the warm weather before it's over, the summers here are short and I just like to enjoy the days with my family. And also this year I've been doing a lot of work as a wedding photographer. I also did that a bit last year, but this year it's been really busy. Also maybe too busy. Um, it's definitely something I had to figure out where is my balance and how much can I, can I manage? Sorry, the wind is coming. I hope it's not too noisy, but yeah, it's just been, um, it's been quite busy and I definitely want to do a little less of that but generally in the summer I do a lot of photography work and I save the, the knitting work for the fall and, um, and when the weather is a bit more cold and I can sp stay inside and knit and so I think you will see much more from me during the winter I hope because I really like to sit down and talk also um, I have been quite busy behind the scenes with something more personal. I can't tell you yet. I promise it's nothing serious or bad. It's hopefully something really good, but it's just not something I can talk about until we are 100% sure. So a lot of exciting stuff is happening, but it's also stuff that takes a lot of, um, of time and energy. And so I haven't had a lot of extra energy for podcasting unfortunately but it's just nice to finally sit down and talk to you guys and um, I hope you enjoyed coming into the garden now we'll go back inside and talk about knitting because that's I hope what you're here for and um, yeah I will see you in there so now that we are back inside of the house I can talk about knitting I guess that's what you're all here for. I have some new finished objects to show you. I haven't been knitting much during the summer, just on some simple projects I will show you that as well. But since the cooler weather arrived, I feel much more like knitting and I have uh, finished some things uh, that I am excited to show you guys. And I also, at the end of the episode, want to show you Mm, my new yarn because if you have been following for a while you will know that once or twice a year I have um, yarn spun at the local mill and this is yarn made from uh, the fleece from my parents sheep excuse me <laughs> so my parents have uh, a small flock of sheep really tiny on their organic farm and they are Gotland sheep and these sheep um, are sheared twice a year so about twice a year I have um, yarn spun and I ha I'm looking over here because I have two huge sacks of wool and um, yeah, I will talk more about that once we get to the end of the episode in case it's something you're not interested in. Uh, but I have a shop update on Saturday, so that's why I want to talk a little bit more about it and show you 
the yarn in all its glory. It is beautiful. So, but let's start with some knitting. This is the first finished object that I'm really excited about. Oh, it's actually upside down. This is a something that I knit the last month, I want to say. I'm actually not sure when I started it, but I cast it off very recently. And it is this beautiful vest. Um, it is uh, made in a quite heavy weight yarn. I think it's iron weight or worsted weight. Um, yarn that I got some years ago and it has these pretty flowers all around the front. It is, as I said, a very simple construction. So it's pretty much just two squares and has some ties in the side. It's a little bit longer on the back. Actually, I don't know if you can see that the way I'm holding it. There you go. It's a little bit longer on the back and it has um, a round neck. So let me just show you a little bit closer. So here you can see the flowers beautifully. They are a mix between knitting and embroidery. And it's a technique that I used before on my Vorsax. So I'll just show you in case you're not familiar with that pattern. I This is the um, short version of the Vorsax and they have this uh, flower motif on the top that's a mix between, as I said, knitting and embroidery. And the reason I'm making it this way is so I have um, that the placement of the flowers is easier. I find if you just do embroidery, it gets a little complicated to figure out where to place the flowers. And so you kind of place them while you're knitting and then you embroider the petals on afterwards. So yeah, do you want to see it on? Should I put it on? Let's do a little... Uh... Okay, so here we go. Just so you didn't have to watch me struggle putting it on. Um, it's just like a very loose, cozy vest that you can wear on top of um, a dress or a very loose shirt. And I have a lot of shirts with big sleeves, so I wanted something that is just easy to put on and you can always adjust the arm holes uh, with the ties so you can make it smaller or bigger if you want to and yeah I'm really happy with how it turned out as you can see it has quite a long ribbing at the bottom and on the back and it has a bit of a rolled hem on the sleeves I'm curious to see if the, they're quite pointy at the moment but maybe it will relax a little bit as I wear it it is as I said quite a thick yarn I used. Um, this design still has no name, so I could call it Vaux Vest, but I find it really hard to say. So I have to come up with a nice name and uh, think about what I want to say. And as you can see, the flowers that I used on the top and bottom row are similar to the socks, but the ones in the middle are a bit more, they're bigger and a little more um, interesting and I was actually inspired by uh, an embroidery piece that I found in a thrift store once that had these flowers with very yeah that look this has this very big um, voluminous petals mm. and it is knit in a yarn as I said that I got a long time ago it was actually a yarn that my partner brought back from Ireland so he had a conference at I in Ireland many years ago I can't I think it was before we had kids so eight years maybe um, my oldest one is seven now I don't know if I can believe it if you've been following long since the beginning you will feel like wow where did time go um, but yeah she's seven and she's losing all of her front teeth anyways that was the side um, yeah I got sidetracked a little bit but uh, he got this yarn when he was in Ireland and I asked him to bring back some local yarn if he could find any. And actually back then he had a difficult time finding local yarn. He could find other yarns, but not Irish yarns. And um, I think maybe it's better now. I know of some Irish um, companies and so on that produces yarn. So I think it should be better. But I know back then he was told that most of the yarn was used in ready to wear and so on uh, but he found this yarn that is from i'm not gonna say the name so i'm gonna show you here and it is the donegal heather 
yarn and it is a uh, Aran 3 ply Aran yarn and it has this very special um, it is like a very neutral color but it has these uh, like strands of brown actually I'm getting a lot of uh, ups and downs let me see if I can kind of show you any somewhere mm, it might be hard to, to pick up but it has like little strands that, that makes it a little bit heathered so I guess that's why the name also and um, yeah it is uh, it was very funny because I got two skeins and they are 250 gram skeins so they were like these massive skeins very fun to to have around and I didn't make anything I thought of many things um, but I never had enough for a whole garment so instead I made a vest and I had just enough I had a little bit left over I don't know if it's somewhere it probably is um, but yeah I'm really happy with it it's very warm and I'm sure I will enjoy it a lot over dresses and as I said shirts with a bit more volume also at the bottom because it doesn't when you wear a dress like the one I'm wearing that is a little bit loose uh, it's really nice to have something that doesn't pull it in I find with a lot of sweaters it tends to get very bunched up underneath the sweater so yeah um, and what else to say it's the color I think the color is called oatmeal or something or natural it says here I don't know but uh, it's a design that I, I'm writing it down right now, but I haven't, um, it hasn't been tested or anything, so I don't know when it will come out. And that is a bit the problem at the moment. I have so much to do, as I said when I was talking outside, that I am just trying not to stress myself. And normally I would try to um, have my re the release of the pattern so it would fit with the time of year but honestly I think this one will just come out whenever it's ready because that way it it's a bit more exciting to to release it when I'm once I finish it instead of waiting for the perfect time and I mean I have people are, all around the world will have different weathers so maybe for someone in a warmer country this is perfect for winter and for me, this is actually perfect for winter if I'm indoors, because if there's heating on, then we don't really need to wear big sweaters. It's only for outside. So depending on where you live and how your weather situation is, it might be perfect for all times of year. Yeah, and I'll just keep this one on because it feels very nice. And now I have a little, I was feeling a bit cold after coming in, but now I got warm again. So... Uh, what else did I want to talk about? Um, I just wanted to mention another pattern that I have shown here before, so I'm not going to talk too much about it, and that is my Vilnius sweater. I promised it would be out in September, and yeah, it didn't happen, and I have just been... Too many things have been going on, so one of the things I could postpone was releasing this one. It is almost stupid <laughs> I feel because I have the pictures ready I have the pattern ready it has been tech edited and tested I just need to um, to set it up nicely in the program I use for um, setting up patterns and check all the comments from the testers that I didn't miss anything so that's why it's a little bit I just need to have one day with a clear head so I can go through all the comments again make sure I didn't miss anything and I don't know it just never happens um, and it might seem very weird that it's so hard to get it out but it is and I really hope to get it out in October uh, but this is the Vilnius sweater I hope you can see it a little bit maybe like this uh, and I really love it I've been wearing it a couple of times already it's just such a nice a lightweight knit it's knit in fingering weight and I think it would be perfect with my yarn that's coming out so uh, I wanted to have it out together with the yarn but it's just too many things and I'm just me in this business doing photography and uh, knitwear design and yeah I just have to be good to myself and not not do too much anyways uh, I already talked about that I don't want to bore you with that whole <laughs> discussion again um, I wanted to say it's knit in yarn from or Geul, 
that is a Danish uh, dyeing natural naturally di natural dyeing company. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, they do natural dyes, and this one is not naturally dyed. It's just in their uh, base yarn. In the um, they have different blends for the base, and this one is a New Zealand lamb's wool, but it has a bit of a. Um, I can actually show you a bit up close. It has some um, some warm colors mixed into the white and a little bit of gray so it gets this warm-ish neutral <laughs> it's a little bit hard to explain but i really like this color and you could of course get it in one of their beautiful beautiful um colorways made with natural dye but i really like how it looks also in a non-dyed yarn so but i think it will be very nice with my gotland yarn it's the same yarn weight uh, but I don't have it ready yet, so I will talk about that later. That is the wilderness sweater, and I hope to have it out in October, but I don't want to promise anything anymore because I keep disappointing myself. Um, yeah, that were all my... No, I have one more. <laughs> I was thinking, what was the other thing? I have it in a basket here, and that is the shawl. This is actually what I've been working on all summer while we were away on holiday. Uh, because it's such an easy knit to work on. This is a um, shawl design. It's on the needles, unfortunately. I'm in the middle of a row, so you have to excuse the weird <laughs> how it looks. But it is, um, it's a shawl that I'm working on. For now, it's just a very simple triangle with the linen stitch. That is one of my favorite stitches to look at. Unfortunately, it's not my favorite stitch to knit. It's very easy to knit, but it's also something that's a little bit hard on the hands. So I like to work on this when I'm just in between other projects and some mindless knitting. So the only thing missing is I need to make it a little bit bigger, but it will be like a very soft and yeah, soft shawl. And then I will want to make, um, I really want to put on an, a design on the edge, but I don't know what exactly i've tried different things and i'm th still thinking about it because i think this will be what makes it a little more interesting so but just to show you the linen stitch up close it is very very beautiful here you go so it's very beautiful but also a little bit repetitive because you kind of always slip every second stitch with the yarn in front and that is a little bit for the hands to figure out but I really love to work on it in between other things and I think it will be... It's, I don't know if it ever happens to you guys, but sometimes the most simple knits are the ones I love the most. So if it has a really beautiful fabric or... Um, yeah, if it's just something that that's very easy to touch and look at. And so I really wanted to make this shawl with this stitch, even even though I know it's something not everyone maybe will enjoy that much, but I think it's a very good in-between, mindless in-between projects uh, knit. It's definitely mindless. You kind of just do the same. It's a bit like seed stitch. Um, so of course you have to keep atten pay attention to that um, every second row it is shifting, but that's it. And, oh, I forgot to talk about the yarn. So let me show you. This is the yarn that I'm using and I just have a little swatch <laughs> hanging from the end. Um, it is a yarn from uh, from Isaya that is a single ply uh, finger no lace weight yarn. I got it some years ago when the yarn shop was closing. It's a beautiful okra. Is it called okra colorway? And um, it is just very nice. But I was finding it hard to figure out what to knit with it. Because it is single ply, it will kind of twist to one side, I heard. in If you wear make a garment, it tends to make the fabric twist. Like if you don't sew something on the bias. Yeah. And, um, and this yarn is uh, quite rustic, but uh, I think it would be very nice for this shawl. So the good thing is when you work the linen stitch, you work with bigger needles than the yarn normally calls for. So this is a fingering weight, but I work this shawl with 
uh, four millimeter needles. So it's not worked on a two millimeter needles or something. Um, and yeah, I am just giving it a bit of a rest because I'm not 100% sure about the, um, the border I want to add, but I really need to figure it out because I think it. I have a few ideas, I just have to decide on which one will be the best. And I have one last thing that is so small, I don't didn't really know if I wanted to show you guys, but it is a work in progress, I guess. <laughs> it is this teeny tiny little piece of knitting and it is, um, yeah, it's a shoulder, it's a piece of a shoulder that is actually uh, the construction I use for my lobby sweater and I have it right here so I'm just going to show you in case you don't know what pattern that is and the lobby sweater is this giant hug of a sweater with little dots all over and that is what we in the I know in Denmark and Norway at least we call this stitch lobby because it looks like little fleas and lobby means fleas in yeah flea in uh, Danish and Norwegian so this uh, design is made with a contiguous um, construction and so you begin by making the shoulders and then you work start working around and then the sleeves are attached uh, um, knit as you go so nothing is attached everything is worked at once and um, this design has a really nice uh, shoulder construction but when I tried to knit it with this yarn instead so this is Plotolopi two strands held together if I remember correctly and um, when I tried to knit it in this yarn uh, it didn't look as nice because the Plotolopi fills out the space uh, beautifully so there are no holes so I had to think a little bit about the construction and also if anyone else wants to knit this pattern but use a different yarn Mm, it doesn't look as nice, I find. So I was working around, playing around with the construction and I found out that if you add one more stitch in the center, it looks better. So what I did is I added a little stitch in the center. It still creates a bit of a row of holes, but it I think it looks quite nice. So this is where the shoulder will grow from. I'm this was just a little swatch to play around with it, but I really want to cast it on because the lapis sweater is very warm. It's very warm and it's very um, thick and very much for outside for when you're outdoors. And I wanted something a little more wearable for inside, so it's perfect for when you're outside. And I found this yarn. This is a yarn from Self Made, or that used to be called Stuff and Steel. And this is their Freya yarn. It's a uh, organic, 100% organic wool. And I just thought it was looked nice. It's again the same, very much the same tones I'm drawn to at the moment. And um, I held it together with a strand of mohair. So yeah, this is my next cast on. I'm planning to do. And I think that's it for my works in progress and finished objects i just have been um i haven't been knitting that much but i've been really excited when i was working on the vest and i want to cast on something else uh, so i can have a new cozy knit on the hands and then in between that i have my shawl that is very mindless and good for car rides and so on so so let's move on to the last bit of today's episode and that is talking about what I have here in my lap and that is the new yarn that I had produced. Um, so here it is. It's this very, very nice dark heathered grey. It looks a bit light in the window. Um, maybe if I hold it up here it will look a bit more true to colour. So it's like a, this charcoal undertone but with light, lighter specks in between and I just think it's stunning. I'm so happy with how it turned out because it looks very similar to the um, to the fleece that the sheep produce. Sorry, I'm just gonna move my basket. It's funny because I realized you can see me in the mirror behind but yeah, that's how it is. Um, 
it looks very similar to the fleece that uh, she produced. They go from this completely almost black to uh, light gray. And a lot of the color is ch this charcoal uh, mix. And so if you have seen my other updates, you know that I have had different yarn weights made in the past. Uh, the last times has been a DK worsted weight. And I thought it would be fun to try something different. So this time I decided to go for a fingering weight. Uh, I never had a fingering weight before. I have done, no, I've done worsted and DK. Those are the two, or sport, sport DK are the two I've been doing in the past. But this time it's a fingering weight. And um, yeah, I'm really excited because it means it can be used for different designs mine or other people's it doesn't matter but sometimes i get questions about what which ones of my designs i can use the yarn for and i think this time it will be perfect for my Vilnius sweater and um, maybe even it could be really nice for my hula bear shawl oh the sun came out and now i'm all <laughs> lighted up um probably a few more patterns that does i have oh and my my uh, it's called the Skullmaker sweater. Now I remember it. It is, um, it's an older design of mine, so the name was for some reason gone. Um, but you can find all my designs and the yarn weight and so on, all the information in my Ravelry shop. And I put the link down below in the show notes in the info box. And any other information uh, that I mention, I try to put in the um, show notes. So if you have any questions, go check there first and then. You can of course always ask me but normally I have the information there so yeah I wanted to talk a little bit about the mix um, the blend of this yarn so it's a 75% Gotland wool and the Sun came back to make me very white and shiny it's a 75% Gotland wool and 25% Falkland Merino uh, this is a mix I've used before uh, but I actually stopped using it. So at the spinning mill, they cannot do 100% Gotland wool because of the fibers and the machines cannot spin it. Um, so you have to blend in something else. And so in the beginning, I used Falkland Merino. That is what the mill has on hand and recommends. Um, but it is imported from the Falkland Islands. So in the last batches, I had it made with the... Uh, a local yarn from the mill so the family that owns the mill also have sheep uh, but unfortunately for the fingering weight they cannot use this um, these fibers again because of the spinning so we are back to Falkland Merino that is also a very nice mix um, I just wanted to explain because I was so excited getting a hundred percent um, local yarn the last times but depending on the weight um, apparently it's uh, not possible so I was not aware of that when I decided, but I'm still really happy with the, um, with the mix because it makes it possible for different styles and maybe in the future I will go back to having um, having yarn made that is 100% local. I think it's it's nice to try different things and see what, what works and the good thing about using Merino is that it's very soft and it kind of uh, makes the yarn a little bit softer since Scotland is... Um, quite has quite long fibers that are for many people not what you consider consider soft the good thing about uh, Gotland wool is that it gets this very fluffy halo um, and it is very strong it's a very strong yarn it um, it's very fluffy and gets very beautiful so normally if you talk about woolen spun yarns this is a woolen spun then you talk about it blooming when you wash it I don't find that as much the case with Gotland wool but what happens is it kind of blooms when you wear it and instead of peeling as a lot of yarns do it kind of just fluffs up a bit like mohair so yeah I really enjoy working with Gotland yarns and I'm so happy that I can make this yarn I think I've been doing <laughs> this a lot but it's kind of funny to sit here and play with skeins I have two big sacks of this yarn uh, just one color as well um, other times I made sev several colors, but this time I decided to go for uh, just one shade. Yeah. And um, what else do I want to say about the yarn? Um, 
it will go live in my Etsy shop on Saturday and um, normally you have in the past at least it's been that way that it sold out rather quickly so I just want to mention in case you're interested just be ready when it's um, nine o'clock uh, it's nine o'clock Central European time again I will put it below the times for anyone else um, and yeah what else is there to mention oh and I wanted to mention that the Etsy shop sometimes is a bit slow uh, when I put up the um, listing on the Etsy shop it just doesn't always show up straight away and I don't know why that is it always stresses me out like crazy because people are writing me that they cannot see the yarn and I promise you I put it up so just keep refreshing the page at nine o'clock and it should show up mm. and yeah I will have as I said two batches or two um, two sales just so I can manage to send it all out on time since it's just me I don't want to risk that I don't have enough time to to ship everything so I made two uh, I will make two shop updates and the first one is on Saturday and the next one will probably be in January um, so in case you missed something or you didn't manage this time there will be another one in January and I think I talked enough about yarn and all the good stuff that comes with beautiful rustic yarn. I yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them below. I um, will talk to you guys soon and I hope you have a lovely weekend. Bye.